Okay, let's see. Uh, I put in about eight hours yesterday. And then I put in about another eight hours today. We got 16 hours. Yes, that's right. I've been working on this for 16 hours. Eight hours yesterday from like five in the afternoon till one in the morning and eight hours today. And I got it fixed and all cleaned up and it's working. What is it? It's a Burroughs key operated adding machine. This is another dead tech review. So in my previous video where I talked about taking portable typewriters in some kind of a carrying bag out into the field, I did just that. I took my little uh, Olympia SF and my little green shoulder bag and I went up to my local cigar store where I like to hang out, smoke a stogie and talk with some friends. And one of the guys came by, he's a regular to the cigar store but I never really knew him. And because I had my typewriter with me, he saw the typewriter and he says, hey, I have a couple typewriters. We got to talking and he said, hey, are you going to be here? Yeah, I said, yeah. He goes, I'm going to go up to the house and get my typewriter and I'll bring you something else. So he brought a Remington Noiseless typewriter and it's in kind of rough shape. I tried to tinker with it there, but I basically gave him advice. You need to get it fixed. But he brought me this Burroughs key operated adding machine and said I could have it if I wanted to fix it up. What a great challenge. I've never worked on an adding machine before and you know what? This is the most complicated mechanical thing I've ever worked on and it took me a long time to get it. But uh, what I've done is um, I left the four screws out. There's two in the front and two in the back and I left the four screws out so we could take a look at it. The hand crank on the right side pulls right off. There is a little slot, you probably can't see it, it's not focused, there's a little slot in the shaft and there's a little spring clip that holds that handle in and then we're just going to pull this thing off and take a look at it on the inside. Boom! This is one of the most complicated things I've ever worked on and this is a key operated um, adding machine, meaning that the power of the keys themselves is what does the adding. The handle here on the right side is just for uh, clearing your total. So for instance we have this number 16 here and to clear it we just clear it like that. The thing about these uh, adding machines is they use a very complicated system of planetary gears in these number wheels and a whole series of little cogs the, the heart of it, there is a rod behind the row of, of wheels and it has little gear sets that are spring loaded. They slide back and forth on this rod and they determine how these wheels act. And there's, like I said, there's planetary gears in all these. And what that's for is when you enter numbers, you don't have to do them one digit at a time. You can do it two digits at a time or you can do the whole number. And it not only adds the number, but if there's any carrying involved, the carrying happens automatically separate from the number entry. So you don't have to do it one number at a time. So to enter a number, you know, like 111, one, one, and then you just go 222, two, two, and you got 333 three, three on the display here. And again, you clear it. So very complicated mechanism. And when I got this, this machine was totally frozen up. The handle was jammed and none of these wheels would even move. Everything was locked up. And I went through round after round of degreasing, PB blaster, uh, naphtha, isopropyl alcohol, uh, brushing, uh, Q-tips, uh, compressed air, over and over and over again. I finally had to disconnect a linkage on this side, this linkage right here that is part of the clearing mechanism and I was able to unjam the clearing mechanism underneath here and finally get some action on it and then it took me a long time to get these little sliding gears that are behind here get those all set up uh, so that the, the wheels would give the right number of counts and they wouldn't overshoot the number. The way this adding machine basically works is uh, you, you push a, a, a rod down and 
the larger the number, one is down here, nine is up here, the larger the number, the, the, the further the travel is. So it's kind of an analog device where the length of the travel is directly proportional to the number that you get on the wheel. And what it's doing is through a, a linkage, it's running a sect, segment gear that's uh, incrementing this wheel this planetary gear system by how far and it, it 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 turns the wheel when you release the key so you push down the key it loads that sector gear and then you release it it triggers the thing to fire so if you go nine it goes up like that now here's a really cool thing you can do with this you can go all nines i don't know if you can see that and let's go so they're right there let me add one to it isn't that cool that's a that's a ripple carryover. Let's try that again. Nines. Let's add one to it. Cool. Isn't that neat? Well, this took me a long time to fix. Boy, I'm happy I got it. So you might notice on the keyboard that each key has a large primary number and then there's another number to the left of it that's smaller. And those are complementary numbers and they're used for subtraction. And it works very similar to the way an abacus works. So to do a, sub a simple subtraction problem using this system of complementary numbers, let's do a simple one, uh, for instance, 11 minus 5. So we're going to first enter 11. There's our 11 right there. And now we're going to be subtracting 5. And so what we want to do is want to find the complement the number that says 5 minus 1 which is 4 and then we hit all the 9 keys and the answer is 6. So you're kind of doing complementary arithmetic you're subtracting the complement minus 1 because the complements they're using are 9's complements not 10's complements. You notice 8 and 1 is 9, and 7 and 2 is 9, etc. So they're using 9's complements. You're adding the complement, and then you're doing the carryover of all the 9's in order to get the right number to show on the, on the register. And by the way, there is a... So this, this has 7 columns, 7 digit calculator, but there's an 8th button and an 8th number wheel, and that's strictly for carryover. So you have your seven primary ones, and the eighth one is carryover. And if you push that carryover button, it'll decrement the number one at a time right here. Let's try another subtraction problem uh, to make it a little bit easier for you to understand. Let's take the number 100. So there's 100. And let's subtract 25 from it. So we're going to find the two in the complements which is opposite the 7, and we're going to find the 5, and we're going to go one less, which is the 4, and that's opposite the 5, and then we're going to do our carrying of our 9's, and the answer is 75. 100 minus 25 is 75. Complementary arithmetic with these keys that has the 9's complements on them. Now, when I was cleaning up these keycaps after I had uh, fixed the machine, I noticed that a lot of these uh, lower right keys, they have little um, grooves cut in the top of the keycap. Like the top of the 2 is worn, the top of the 3, and the 4 here, and even the 5, and this 5. And I think what that is, is that the person using the machine was uh, using this as the home position. In fact, looking in some of the online literature, there was a specific way of using these machines where, for instance, if you had to add a large number like a 6 or a 9, instead of reaching all the way up for the 6 or the 9, you would simply do the 3 two or three times. So these keys down here were used more than any of the others. If you contrast that with how the keys on the left side of the keyboard look, they're in much better shape. Uh, and the secondary complementary numbers are, are much easier to read also. I did a little bit of online research about the origins of this uh, calculator and the adding machine and the Burroughs company. Um, they started off in the late 19th century with a different name, but in around 1911 they changed it to Burroughs. There was a competing kind of adding machine called a Comptometer, and Comptometers uh, sort of at that time were sort of the terminology for these machines. They weren't called calculators or adding machines. They called them comptometers. In fact, Burroughs' first 
uh, key operated uh, calculators around 1912 were called Burroughs Comptometers and there was some kind of a legal hassle, a lawsuit that went on between Comptometer Company and Burroughs because Burroughs borrowed the name Comptometer. Um, so this serial number the serial number database I've seen online is not real thorough regarding these portable uh, adding machines, the key operated ones, so I can only say it's probably late 20s, early 30s as far as when it's dated. Um, Burroughs was in the early mainframe computer business and in 1986 they merged with Sperry Univac and then in uh, later on they became Unisys. So Burroughs is now part of Unisys. Um, and so that's kind of a little bit of history of it, but these, uh, this basic mechanism came out around 1912, so just before World War I, this, this technological design. Very complicated for the day, more complicated than the Comptometer competitor, but it was also lighter and smaller. Um, but the, the system of planetary gears and those little number wheels, very complicated and pretty impressive once you get it working, to see that thing work like that. So, well, I have my a new uh, calculator on my desk. Well, this is Joe Van Cleve with another Dead Tech review. Until next time, you guys have yourselves a great day.